once you start, people want to know that they want to know more. Mm-hmm. Like you've got the audience now, they engage, they want to know. So you just have to keep releasing content. Same so with TikTok, yeah. yeah. So like every day. Yeah. But you guys have to post every day. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Every day. I post every day on Instagram. Every day on TikTok. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hi everyone. I'm Abby Roberts. Hi everyone. I'm Kaiser Kobe. And this is Creator to Creator. Describe the first time someone recognised you. Um, the first time someone recognised me, um, I think I was actually out in Leeds in a drag show, <laughs> which is like the most random place <laughs> to be recognised. Yeah. But I used to go to them all the time because I would always do drag makeup on my Instagram. Oh. So I was like in drag. Yeah. <laughs> and then this girl came up to me and I was like, oh, I think I follow you on Instagram and I do makeup too. So oh, I like followed cool. her back. It was, yeah, I still remember like the exact person that I met and everything. Oh. Do you guys keep in contact now? And stuff yeah, like yeah, I still like, oh. like all the photos and everything. Oh, that's yeah. too cute. What was it like for you when you guys Mine got was, I was shocked really. Like I was, I remember I was in Westfield in Stratford and that's actually just like around the corner from here. And like someone came up to me and was like, Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And it was like a bunch of school kids. And it was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And I was like, what is going on? I'm so confused. And it's like, you're that girl, you're that girl, you're Kaiser Kobe. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh gosh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I think so. I was just like, I was so confused. And I was like, oh, snap. Like people actually recognize me. So I was just like standing still for a long time. And it was like, ah. And I was like, okay, hi. And then they were like, ah. <laughs> and it was just back to cool. But it was so cute. I was like, oh my days, that's like so cool. That was like the first experience. Yeah. And when I went home and told my grandma about it, she's like, oh my gosh, you're like a star now. I was like, <laughs> no in it, but it was cool. Yeah. I remember in the beginning, like I never used to know what to say to people when yeah. they first recognised me. I'd be like, ah. I was like, going for hugs. I mean, I realised not everyone is a hugger. That is so, so true. I'm like, okay, I'm a hug type of person. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. How old were you when you realised you wanted to join the Korea world? Um, I started very young. I was 11 when I 11? first, yeah, I first posted oh my, my first YouTube video. Wait, how old are you now? I'm 18. Oh my gosh, you're, this, you're an OG. <laughs> an OG. <laughs> I mean, it was terrible in the beginning. <laughs> it was like kind of a joke and I was just doing my sister's makeup for fun. Um, yeah, I only got serious about it like the past few years, past two years. So. Oh my gosh, you're a pro. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I did it a while, what about you? Um, when did I start? Okay. Three years ago. <laughs> And it was an accident, it was like by accident as well. Yeah. Like, how can I explain it? So on Carnival, like three years ago, like the Notting Hill Carnival, I was at home bored, everyone was just having fun at the carnival. And I was like, I don't know what to do. I, I'm i just at home, I just want to do something. Like, I was just like, I don't know what to do. So I was like, hmm, what should I do? Then my boyfriend told me, oh, record a video. And I was like, record a video, what are you talking about? <laughs> Cause I was like, I wanted to start YouTube prior to that. And I told him, and he was like, oh, record a video, see how it goes, just do it for fun, because you're not doing anything at home. So just do it. So I did it, and I hated the video, did not release it. And then a couple of months after, around November times, I was showing my friend it. I was like, oh, I, ed- I edited this video. I want to upload it, but I don't know if it's good. I hate it, but I don't want to delete it. What should I do? She was like, just make it into an Instagram tutorial type of thing and just upload it. I was like, cool. I only had like people from college and people I knew on my Instagrams and socials. So I was like, mm. you know what? If any of them cuss me or like, you know, say, oh, what the hell is going on? I know them personally, so we would always meet. So it's not that, it's not that personal, if that makes yeah, sense. But I was like, all right, cool. Let me just post it. I posted it and it literally just went viral. So I was like, oh. Really? It went viral? Yeah. And I was oh like, God, oh, that's so good for your first video. <laughs> yeah, but it was so scary. Cause I was like, if like, what if I just post another content and it doesn't do well? And I was like, oh my gosh, it was really, really scary, but it was really, really cool at the same time. And I just, I was like, okay, I know what they want. I'm just gonna keep giving them what they want. Let me just continue making videos like this. And I was like, whoop, I think I'm into this world now. That's so crazy. <laughs> what was the look that you did? It was like such a basic look as well. It was just like a, um, my everyday makeup look. Mm. Looking back at it, it was terrible. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> terrible. It wasn't blended. There were streaks of makeup everywhere. I don't know why people like that. But like, I don't know why people like the video, but yeah, it was <laughs> bad. I would never do makeup like that again. <laughs> but yeah, that's what the video is. So it was like literally, uh, what do you call it? Accident. But yeah. a really cool accident at the same time. Exactly. Yeah, like my first YouTube video as well, like kind of got a bit viral. Yeah. It's like 700,000 views. That's like that's viral. viral for back then. Yeah, that yeah. is viral. <laughs> so it was really cool at the time being being 11 as well. Like, but you was 11 that time? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Girl, I can't believe I'm next to an OG. <laughs> this was amazing. <laughs> what makes a successful video on YouTube versus TikTok? Um, 
Well, I've not really been that involved in YouTube to be able to like confidently say that. But in terms of TikTok, I feel like you have to be following the trends. Yeah. So if you're like not familiar with how the app works, um, there's the For You page, yeah. which is like um, recommended content that the app promotes. And there's always like new trends coming up almost every day. So, for example, like dance has been a big thing. Yeah, I'm sure you know about yeah, lately with that, the, the renegade, renegade yeah, <laughs> all that. So, following the trends, but like putting your own spin on it yeah. is what really makes your videos stand out. So, mm. I will like do makeup videos, but integrate that with the renegade. Yeah. So, oh, like, wait, so you can do like you do like makeup and renegade at the same time. Mm -hmm. Okay, I need to watch that. So I'll be oh, like renegading, and then like another makeup step happens. So I'm like, oh. ah, my eyes on. <laughs> Okay, that's actually really you cool. get it. Yeah, 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 I, think, yeah. I was like explaining that's so complicated, <laughs> but yeah, and just using the trending audios as well. Like, there's always new music on the app, yeah. so making sure to pay attention to what's going on there. That's yeah. cool. What about YouTube? Like, what with makes YouTube, a good video? you know what? When it comes to making viral content for YouTube, it's really like I feel like every time you make content and you want it to go viral, it doesn't go viral. It's always mm -hmm. the content that you least like well for me anyway it's always content i'm like yeah this is okay that do really well but then i've realized looking back at it it's more the ones that are like more chilled and just like natural just you doing your work but when i put like a lot of like how can i explain it let's say i'm like trying to act like a teacher like when i'm doing a makeup tutorial mm -hmm. and i'm like oh you guys you have to do this just acting unnatural with it those do the worst in views and stuff like that. So when I'm just like going with the flow, being yeah. comfortable. People want to see your personality. Yeah, they just want to see your personality more. Yeah. So that's like something that is really big on YouTube and stuff like that. So I mean, just when I'm just looking natural and stuff like that, that's the content that always goes viral for me. And also just doing like natural thumbnails. I feel like when I do too much on my thumbnails, it also just like don't do that well as well. Really? So when I just upload like a selfie, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense, but let's say I've posted a selfie on Instagram and I use that as my thumbnail on YouTube. Mm. Normally those do better than when I actually do like a proper edited- Like graphics Graphic and type stuff. of, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's just what I've realized works for me when it comes to YouTube. That's really interesting because I never thought about like the types of thumbnails on YouTube before. Oh no, I think they're important. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, definitely, because it's what people see before they click it. Now, like recently, they introduced the 30 second thing. Um, so like, if you hold onto the YouTube video, I think it's 30 seconds, also 15. It plays you can, like yeah, it plays like a little clip. Yeah, but before yeah. it wasn't like that, so it was literally just thumbnail. Mm. Do you want to click it? And titles, titles are important as well. So like, is this a title eye-catching? If someone sees it, are they going to be like, oh, I want to know how to do that, click. And then if the thumbnail's matching it, a recipe for amazingness. Mm, I guess in quick bit. Basically, <laughs> but without doing, without doing too much. But yeah, you just have to make it look really appealing to people. And yeah, I think that's, that's how you, that's like low-key the recipe. Well, that's mm. what works for me anyway. <laughs> yeah. Was reaching success in this world everything you thought it would be? Oh, that is such a difficult question. Because I feel like before, you become successful, you have no idea yeah. what it's going to be like. Yeah. Or like, I never even thought that I would be at yeah. this point to begin with, Literally. like at all. Like it was literally an accident, like you said with your yeah. video as well. It's just always the ones you least expect. So, I mean, I definitely had like a preconceived idea of like what the life was like. And I feel like there's a lot more work yeah. that goes into it than people see like there's a lot that goes behind the scenes yes, with all the editing yeah. and like mm -hmm. answering your emails yep. and just doing all that sort of stuff yeah no i know what you mean with me i feel as if as an accident as well so that puts into there but it's definitely definitely more like serious than i thought it was if that makes sense so looking before like i understand why some people looking into our like into our, the work that we do they're like oh it's just easy just put some makeup on especially with the makeup they're like, you just do what everyone does, every girl does, put some makeup on and just film mm -hmm. it. It's really easy. It's not. It's not just it's putting like, makeup on. It's not just putting makeup on. Completely it's doing the makeup, different. getting the editing, making sure the lights are good. It's literally, a, it's a full day's work. It's literally yes. the same thing. When you got to edit, which takes hours as well. When you have to always be online at the same time. I feel like it's, it's rewarding, but it's also, it comes at a price at the same time. Like I feel as if the work, with the work that we do, we're always online. Mm -hmm. And we're always on, if that makes sense. So like, it's hard, it's, kind of, it's hard to switch off. It, like really hard. Yeah, you're, you're either working us on social media, yeah. but it just feels like work all the time. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Even even when you're just like, let's say you're just doing normal stuff, it's still considered work because yeah. they want to know your life, and that's what technically helps us with what we do. Like 
our personality, like That's what's right. going on with our life and stuff like that. Yeah, even just like keeping up with stories yeah. and stuff throughout the day. It's Literally. Like, it's a constant thing. It's definitely way more intense than I thought it was. But it is really rewarding and literally I thank God for allowing me to even be in a position where mm -hmm. I'm able to help my family from my room, literally, if that makes sense. So yeah, it is cool, but it's intense. Yeah. Um, how far would you go to ensure your video is successful? Have you ever done anything crazy to get views? Hmm. I don't think I have, you know. No clickbait. No. Oh my God, I once did an, an all nighter for a YouTube video. You did it all? Yeah, oh it, was, uh, it was a Christmas video. Yeah. And I started it on Christmas Eve, which was the wrong idea to start filming. Oh my Yeah, and I was doing like a Grinch transformation, like painting myself entirely green. And I, I started it at like 7 p.m. What time did you finish? I finished at 11 a.m. the next day. 11 a.m. the next day? Yeah. You're lying. I was like all night, all night. Because oh um, I was like, I need to get this video edited and like yeah. up by time for Christmas. So I had to stay up the entire night. It was crazy. Oh, right. I feel like I'm always doing crazy stuff for videos though. Like I'll yeah. go out in public in my makeup and film people's reactions. You do that? Yeah. Oh my gosh, how is that? It's terrifying. <laughs> oh, I'll go oh. to Asda like, painted blue and the workers will be laughing at me. It's the funniest thing. <laughs> on TikTok, is it great to have small mistakes or imperfections because it spikes engagement? Is that the same with YouTube? I absolutely think so on TikTok. I feel like it's such a, um, like the platform itself is not as polished as other ones like Instagram. Yeah. People really love to see like the relatability, like everything is filmed on your phone yeah. in vertical format. So it just feels more like it's a friend rather yeah. than like an influencer or whatever. Mm. Um, so I think imperfections, like having not the most amazing video quality, showing like if you make any mistakes and stuff, it's like more personal to people. Nah, I definitely understand what you mean because with Instagram and YouTube, like for example, I talk really fast sometimes and I jumble over my words <laughs> and I always edit those type of stuff out on my YouTube because I always want it to look clean, yeah. polished. I don't want people to see any mistakes. Like even sometimes I talk like extremely fast. People are like, oh my gosh, you talk too fast. And I'm like, okay, so now I have to like slow it down extremely. So I'm just always trying to like technically be perfect for them, if that makes sense, which sometimes can be a bit draining, but it's like, I want the content to like appeal to them. I want them to be happy and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But I do understand what you mean. Because when I see TikTok videos, it just looks so fun. Just yeah. like carefree. It is just, so much fun. Literally just do what you want to do and just upload and it does whatever. But with YouTube and Instagram, it is way a more like, how can I explain it? Like, uh, not a, not professional because TikTok's also professional as well, but more. I think this is like a higher standard. Yeah, like something. there's a higher yeah. standard that people expect. They want the microphones and checked. Everything's clear. They can hear it. Like 300 megapixels when it comes to video. They basically just want to feel like they can see you face to face. Like it has to be that clear, mm -hmm. that detailed. They want the exposure to look right. This has to look, it's basically like making, a, it's literally like making a movie. It is. It's literally it really like is that high of a standard right yeah, now. That's yeah, that's literally how high, like you have to buy expensive equipment when it comes to the lights, technology is just, a lot. And that's that changed sense. so much, I feel like, in recent years as well. Like, YouTube yeah. used to be all yeah, filmed like, on people's I, phones. That's yeah. what I used to do. That's when yeah. I first started out. I was filming on my phone, and then next thing I know, everyone's like, Canon, what was it, Canon i5 or something like that. I was like, damn, let me check the price of that. £2,000. I said, oh my God, I'm a movie maker now. I'm that. a movie maker. <laughs> that's literally what it feels like. So it's just that you definitely have to invest a lot into making those type of content, like, because everyone always wants the best for those type of things. You just have to look clean. But you guys, like, you you know, like, you see it. Like, everyone wants to make sure they look aesthetically pleasing, I think is the word. Mm -hmm. They just want to make sure it looks nice for people. It just looks good, clean and stuff like that. So, but with TikTok, it looks more laid back and fun and chill, yeah. you know? And I think it's so liberating to have a platform like that, like TikTok, where you can just record it super quickly, not have to stress too much about it being yeah. so perfect. Like, it's, it's so good to have that freedom, I think. Yeah, like, I definitely understand because I'm seeing a lot of my, like, friends that are in the influencing world, like, go into that content and they, they love it. They literally love it. It's like, it's so fun to make. It's just like how Instagram and YouTube first started out. They could just be free. They don't have to do too much. Just be themselves more, like, and it just does good anyway. Yeah. So I definitely understand that. What is your advice to anyone watching who feels they want to start their own TikTok or YouTube channel? Oh, that's a good one. Okay, with YouTube, I will always just say, for anyone wanting to start, just start it. Like, I, I know a lot of people are always thinking like, oh, they have to plan on how to start. They have to do this first. They have to make sure that's right. Just start. 
like literally just start like mm -hmm. although there are all these high gears people are using now everyone's videos are so clear and stuff like that but I feel like still using your phone can really take you a long way. Most times everyone has iPhones or really high quality phones anyway. So you can really just record with some good lighting on your phone and just release the content. But make sure like you're consistent because that's when things can go wrong. Like um, I feel like with YouTube, but if you take, uh, actually that's been with most platforms, people always want, like once you start, people want to know that they want to know more. Mm -hmm. Like you've got the audience now, they engage, they want to know so you just have to keep releasing content. Same so with TikTok, yeah. yeah. So like every day. Yeah. But you guys have to post every day. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Every day. I post every day on Instagram. Every day on TikTok. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How is that? It, it's hard to keep up with. Not gonna lie. Especially like when I'm traveling a lot. I have yeah. to Pre-prepare a lot of content and stuff. But. Oh my yeah, gosh. It's fun. <laughs> and here I thought I had it bad. Okay. <laughs> All right. Like I post around like I try to post. I have a week, wait, once or twice a week on YouTube, mm. but definitely consistency and then, oh, always making sure, like, if you're using YouTube, just make sure, like, you're making content that is, like, make, always make content for yourself because sometimes you can get into the bubble of thinking you just have to just make content for your subscribers and that can get a bit, you know, too much sometimes because now you're losing yourself in yeah. the content type of thing. Enjoying you're not enjoying you're making doing. it, yeah. yeah. Cause like, that's how I felt sometimes. Like, I'm like, okay, I've done the content I want to do and when people are like they want this content which is always good to hear feedback of course and you know make your subscribers happy but don't just always rely on what your subscribers want make sure the con you're doing content for yourself as well otherwise you'll just feel like it's just like forced it just becomes forceful because it's not something you naturally want to do if that makes mm -hmm. sense and although like listen to their feedback is all good and stuff you started off doing what you want to do and that's what they like so just continue doing it and then find like a common ground and meet each other halfway if that makes sense yeah. But definitely consistency is like the biggest key. Once you start, don't stop, keep on going and definitely try to have another platform like helping and backing you, if oh, that makes definitely. sense. I think 100%. it's so important to be on multiple platforms. Yeah. You never know which one is gonna yeah, like, end. Literally. Like Vine, we all saw what happened yep. with that. So I'm like, I'm on TikTok, but make sure to follow me yeah. on Instagram mm -hmm. as well and on YouTube and whatever else is coming yeah. out as well, you know? Describe what you remember about the day you posted your first video. What was life like then? I was in my first year of high school. Uh, it was a mess of a video. I remember I made it because I wanted to know what other 11 year olds were wearing makeup wise, <laughs> which wasn't a whole lot. So I wanted to show my version of what I was wearing yeah. at that time. And it was, it was a fun video to make. I'd like made it Recorded it on my iPad, like oh. in the bathroom at a terrible angle, terrible lighting, but it was fun, yeah. <laughs> my day was, as I said as well, it was around, it was in November. I don't remember the day, but it was like mid, uh, still around the early stages of November. And I was talking to my friend again. I was like, oh, I posted this content. Like I made this content, edit it. Should I upload it? She was like, yeah. I was like, so scared. And then I had, I was like, you know what? What I'm gonna do is just post it just before bedtime. So if it does, if like, if people are like, if people decide to laugh at me and stuff like that, I'll be asleep. And then I can just ask my sister. <laughs> you don't hear it. Yeah, I don't see it. And then I can just ask my sister in the morning if she sees anything, take my phone from me and just delete it. So I don't ever see type of stuff like that. Like I literally told her that. So when I woke up that day, like the next day after I had posted it, everyone was like calling my phone, calling my phone. So I was like, oh my gosh, the video did bad. Everyone's laughing at me. Oh, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> Everyone's like, go on your Instagram, go on your Instagram. I was like, what are you guys talking about? Like, leave me alone. Like, I don't want to see any negative comments. It was like, go on your Instagram. I didn't go on it until I went to college. And then when I went to college, I was like, okay, let me just go on it. Cause I'm around like people I trusted. And there was like, if anything, let just go on it. Cause they were just smiling a lot. So I was like, okay, cool, maybe it's good. So when I went on it, Evan, it just so well. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And it was just, it just, I don't know, it was just so cool, like just seeing like content that's actually done, like your first ever content that you upload do so well. It was like really like surreal, like mm. it felt amazing, but very scary at the same time. I was like, oh my God, like, ah, like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> like it just left me like speechless. Like I was speechless for like a week. Like literally. encourages you to do more yeah. as well than if your first one does literally. so well. Yeah. So it was a cool day, it was a cool day. <laughs> and last question, has there been a moment where you wanted to walk away from it all? Ooh, that is, ooh, okay, that's an intense one. Um, how can I explain it? Because 
YouTube was what I always wanted to start off with first. It started off as a hobby and then it turned into a job. And I always tell people, make sure you don't just have one hobby that you, if you, in case you want to turn it into a job because it does, it's just not as fun as it is anymore. It feels like work. Yeah, it now feels like work. That's so it's not true. as fun. And I was like, oh, I'm not enjoying it anymore. I don't know. So then I just blocked it out of the way. But then I just started making more content for myself and just what I liked and just did what I did in the beginning. And then I started enjoying it again. So definitely last year, I definitely wanted to walk away from YouTube because of that, because of how if I felt like it was a job and not a hobby anymore. Yeah. I've had that same struggle with it feeling more like a job than a hobby, but yeah. more so with just like creative block, like when I can't think of new look ideas, that's yeah. like what really stresses just, me yeah, out. Yeah. But I, I feel like TikTok's really good for like finding inspiration and stuff because if you're stuck, you can sort of just go with the trends and stuff. That's true. So it gives a bit of guidance and that's really useful. Yeah. Thank you for watching Creator to Creator.